Hey, this is John with Two Moose Home Inspections. Let's talk about your frozen pipes. Welcome to Inspector Insights. During the winter, it is very possible that the water pipes in your home could freeze, resulting in severe and costly damage to your home. During this video, we'll be discussing the natural events, construction practices, and the things that we do as homeowners that lead to frozen pipes. We will then discuss some of the different ways of reducing your risk and how to check if your pipes are at risk of freezing. Cold weather is the first prerequisite for frozen pipes, but most houses can handle the cold without any issues. So what does it take to be at risk? It's important to remember that the difference between liquid water and frozen water is just one degree. So houses that are already on the cusp of having frozen pipes during a normal winter season are susceptible to changing exterior temperatures, changing interior temperatures, opening or closing doors inside the house, and how frequently the plumbing is being used. If any of these variables change, it's possible that the pipes in your house could freeze. During an extreme cold weather event, it's imperative that steps are taken to prevent pipes from freezing. If there is a power outage, an interruption of natural gas, an empty propane tank, or an unexpected failure of the furnace or boiler, the pipes in your house have a limited amount of time to be saved before they freeze. Not all houses are created equal. The placement of pipes in the house and how well the house is insulated has a massive impact on the likelihood of freezing. Standard construction practices don't always turn out well in high alpine environments. Exterior walls have historically been made with 2x4 wooden studs, which provide a limited amount of space in the wall for insulation. And unfortunately, when that space is taken up by plumbing pipes, there is no effective way to properly insulate that space. That is why homes built in cold climates shouldn't have pipes installed on the exterior wall. To keep the pipes installed in the exterior wall of the home from freezing, some homeowners have learned to keep their cabinets under the bathroom and kitchen sink open during cold weather events. This is done to allow the warm conditioned air in the home to escape into the cabinet, through the drywall, past the pipes located in the poorly insulated exterior wall, and then out the house. Hopefully, as your expensive heat escapes past the pipes, enough of that heat can be absorbed by the pipes before it escapes to prevent the pipes from freezing. If the cabinets are shut, the warm air from the house may not be able to heat the pipes well enough and the pipes still might freeze. Some houses have plumbing in the crawl space, but the crawl space is not a conditioned space, which means that it isn't heated or cooled, which can lead to frozen pipes. Some crawl spaces are vented, which means that the air in the crawl space is being exchanged for the freezing cold air outside, which will definitely result in frozen pipes. Your first thought might be to close the crawl space vents to prevent the cold air from entering the crawl space, but two health hazards can occur when you do that. First, reducing the crawl space ventilation can result in an increase of radon inside the house that might be above the EPA's action level of four pictocuries per liter, which means that you and your family may be at risk at developing lung cancer from radon. The second issue can also cause respiratory issues because the moisture that might be present in the crawl space is no longer being vented to the exterior, which could result in mold growth, which can be harmful to occupants in the home. Similarly, attic spaces are not conditioned spaces, but yet plumbing is run through the ceilings and attics of homes all the time. Clearly, since an attic space is vented and it's designed to create a continuous exchange of air from the exterior to the interior of the attic, the risk of frozen pipes can exist. However, this normally isn't an issue when the inside temperature of the house is set to a comfortable level because heat will rise and escape out of the roof of the house just like we talked about in our videos about ice dams and the blog post. One of the most important aspects of preventing your pipes from freezing is to keep your house warm. If your house is kept at a reasonable temperature, then the pipes of your home should be capable of staying warm enough to not freeze. When a home is not in use, such as a second home, rental property, or it's just waiting to be sold, the owners might try to save a little bit of money by lowering the temperature of the house to reduce the heating bill. But we've seen frozen pipes in houses that have their temperature set at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Most empty homes that we inspect are set to the lowest heating setting, which is about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. When the house is set to 15 degrees lower than it normally would be, it's more than enough of a drop of temperature to cause the pipes to freeze. Remember, it only takes a drop of one degree to freeze. Another consideration for second homes, rentals, and those waiting to be sold is the lack of water consumption. Some homes have sections of pipe that can be at risk of freezing, but when water is used throughout the day, that section of pipe might not have a chance to freeze. Let's assume that a section of pipe might take 48 hours to freeze during the winter. If a home is used every day, then the water in the pipe is replaced by an above freezing supply of water and that 48 hour countdown restarts. If a homeowner is away for an extended period of time, the pipe could freeze solid. This all sounds rather doom and gloom. Is it always game over when a pipe freezes? Well, it depends. If the pipe or its fittings don't rupture, then the worst thing that will happen is that you won't have water until the frozen blockage melts or can be bypassed. 
But depending on how quickly the pipe freezes, what section of the pipe freezes, and how much of the pipe freezes, the pipe may or may not be damaged. As water freezes, it expands, which can cause the pipe to rupture. If a pipe freezes quickly, the water will be frozen in place, which might cause a localized rupture. If the pipe freezes more slowly, then the water may have an ability to expand along the length of the pipe, which would allow the pipe to freeze without rupturing. Some pipes, like PEX, can expand slightly, so the likelihood of rupture is reduced. PEX is the most rupture-resistant pipe material, followed by copper, and then CPVC far behind the pack. If you have galvanized pipe or polybutylene, then you have more issues to worry about than just freezing. If the section of pipe that freezes is located between fittings, such as 90 degree elbows or T-junctions, the fittings could be forced off of the pipe, or the rupture could be localized to the joint. If only a small amount of the pipe freezes, the expansion tank in the system may be able to absorb the extra pressure created by the ice blockage. The real issue with frozen pipes is not fully realized until the pipe thaws. When a pipe thaws, the water will begin leaking out of any compromised section of the pipe, and when this happens, not only will building materials and personal items be at risk of water damage, but once the water is stopped, the risk of mold then becomes the next greatest concern. Sometimes the source of the leak is very difficult to find because water doesn't always present itself near the source of the leak. The water may not become visible until there is a natural break in construction materials, such as eight feet away from the leak at the drywall seam. What this means is that a large section of ceiling, floor, or wall may need to be removed to find the leak, which can make the repair extremely expensive. Even if there is no immediate leak caused by the freezing pipes, it is still very possible the pipe strength is compromised, which may result in a leak days, months, or even years from the initial pipe freeze. Insulation can be applied directly to water pipes to reduce the risk of freezing. This type of insulation is most effectively used to prevent heat loss from hot water pipes, but people also apply this insulation trying to prevent the pipes from freezing. Insulation only slows the rate of heat loss and it does not provide heat. If above freezing water is not passed through the pipe, then the pipe will freeze regardless of how much insulation is added. If you're concerned that your pipes might freeze during an extreme cold weather event, then you can turn your faucets on to a slow trickle, which will help to reduce the pressure inside the pipes and supply the pipes with an above freezing supply of water. If the pipes do freeze, it'll allow the pipes to freeze in a uniform manner, which will reduce the risk of rupturing. It is still possible that the heat loss in one section of pipe is greater than the heat gain from the above freezing water supply that's moving through it, which would then lead to a localized blockage and that would result in ruptures. So if there are sections of exposed pipe that are at risk of freezing, such as a water supply pipe in a non-conditioned vented crawl space, then heat tape might be a good option to keep the pipe at an above freezing temperature. Continuous voltage heat tape may be a fire risk because it can create hot spots when the wire is overlapped. But variable voltage heat tape will modify the resistance along the length of the wire to prevent hot spots and reduce your electrical bills. If heat tape is improperly installed, it is possible to create unintended fire and electrical shock hazards, and if the electricity goes out, there's nothing heat tape can do to help you protect your pipes. Normally, the hot water pipes in your house run parallel to the cold water pipes, and this can help you keep the cold water line at an above freezing temperature through the parasitic heat loss of the hot water pipe. Some of the heat being radiated off of the non-insulated hot water pipe will be absorbed by the cold water pipe. A water circulation pump can be added to keep the water in your system moving and heated. If your house has a water circulation system, the pipes might be at a lower risk of freezing. Increasing the temperature inside the house can help to reduce the risk of freezing pipes. It may be a good idea to increase the temperature of your house by a few degrees during an extreme cold weather event. This will help make sure that the heat of the house can penetrate into the walls far enough to warm the pipes. If you're concerned about plumbing located on the exterior wall, you can open the cabinets under your bathroom and kitchen sinks to help the warm air in the house reach the pipes. If your pipes are located in the crawl space, you can install insulation to reduce the heat draw caused by the cold foundation and the ground. Insulation will only help in the crawl space if the crawl space is not vented. If your crawl space is sealed and insulated, you can install a small electric heater in the crawl space to keep the temperature of the crawl space above freezing. But this solution will not only increase your electrical bill, but it'll also be completely ineffective if your electricity goes out. Remember, if the crawl space is vented and you close the vents, it can cause some serious illnesses from increases of both radon and mold. If you've done all that you can do to prevent freezing pipes and you're leaving your house for a period of time in the winter, you can install leak alarms and temperature alarms to send an alert to your cell phone if water or freezing temperatures are detected. Unfortunately, this won't help you shut off the water or fix the heating issue, but it allows you to be proactive for a relatively low cost. But if the power goes out, any of these options may not function unless they are installed with a battery backup system. Water usage and leak detection valves learn how water is used in your house and shut off the water if they sense a leak or unusual behavior. 
Battery backups can be installed to ensure that the system works during power outages and the system can prevent tens of thousands of dollars of damage when you're away from the house. These types of automatic valves can be worth their weight in gold, not just for freezing pipes, but also ruptured supply lines for refrigerators, ice machines, laundry machines, or dishwashers. If you want to get an idea about the amount of risk your pipes are facing each winter, you can perform this simple analysis. First, record the inside temperature of your house and the outside temperature. Then run the cold water and place a thermometer in the water stream. Keep track of the changes in temperature and record the lowest temperature. If the water pipes are on the exterior of the house, the thermometer may have the lowest temperature reading shortly after you turn on the faucet. If the pipe travels through a cold attic or crawl space, the lowest temperature water may take several seconds to reach the thermometer. After a few minutes, the temperature of the water should drop to an even lower temperature and stay consistent, which would be representative of the temperature of the water supply. You can then use this information to help you make assumptions about the risk of your freezing pipes. The best time to run this test is early in the morning after a cold night before anybody has had a chance to run the water. Next, you'll repeat this procedure on a different day, and it doesn't matter if the outside temperature is warmer or colder as long as the difference in temperature outside is significant, such as 20 degrees or more. Ideally, your inside temperature would be consistent, which would leave you with two outside temperatures and two water temperatures. This can help you understand what the water temperature is in your pipes and when you might be at risk of freezing. You can apply this information by using some graph paper and plotting your data on the page. If my first measurement had an outside temperature of 50 and a water temperature of 60 before the water supply stabilized at 40, I would place a dot at that intersection. If my second measurement had an outside temperature of 30 and a water temperature of 45 before the water supply stabilized at 40, then I would place a dot at that intersection. When I draw a line between those two points, I can extrapolate that my pipes might be at risk of freezing when it's about 14 degrees outside. I can repeat these steps as many times as I want to ensure that I have accurate data to base my decisions on. Now, I'm going to plot a water supply that isn't at risk of freezing. If my initial measurement remained the same, but my second measurement had an outside temperature of 10 and the water temperature of 55, you can see that whenever I draw that line between the two points, there is no reasonable risk of freezing as long as the interior house temperature remains constant. Hopefully you learned a little about freezing water pipes and some of the things that you can do to prevent them from happening to you. If you have any questions or if you'd like to schedule a home inspection, please visit twomoosehomeinspections.com. Have a wonderful day.